Okay, I got some fantasy cards. Tom Kid, Crown of the Serpent. I spent too much time working on the perspective in this painting. I was obsessed and eventually abandoned my tracing paper and just painted what seemed right. I learned something about perspective that I've used in other paintings. So our eyes don't see straight lines, only our brain does. Perspective for the artist is there to be manipulated. Red Street Shop, interesting name. The book stands were inundated with alien bar scenes in the mid 80s. It seemed natural that different aspects of other worldly creatures should be depicted. After all, not all non terrestrials are alcoholics. To dispel those bad stereotypes, this cover depicts those creatures just doing their grocery shopping. The Bear King's Daughter. I call them id creatures, i.e., monsters from the subconscious, and I, in an excellent way to create them is to use the Warshocks method. You just start slicing paint around till you see something scary and paint it. For fun, I snuck in a rather docile fellow called Concrete from a well known comic by Paul Chadwick. You see him in the background making a peace sign over the head of another creature. Oh, okay, so. There's the guy making the peace sign. Lots of creatures there. The alien Ray is this a returning hero or a race of otherworldly evildoers? He gets himself away when he takes off his glove and made his hand stand out by placing a light blue screen strategically behind it. For fun, I placed a symbol of an armored fist holding an olive branch in a lightning bolt. Other Air Force brats should recognize it. I don't really see it. An olive branch, Lord of the Skies. I purposely burnt out the lit areas much like a slightly overexposed photograph. For this cover, this was to help emphasize the darkness of space. In space, there is no ambient light, no atmosphere to disperse light into shadows. However, there is reflective light, such as off a planet. I used the light bouncing off the Earth to give form to areas of the figure and spacecraft that would otherwise have been flat. One step from Earth, this was an anthology of matter transporter stories. I combined elements of each story and placed them together, coming out of a transporter. This is a typical example of complementary use of color. High Crusade, Knights with Ray Guns, it seems like a hell of a lot of fun to me. I may have been too subtle with this. That knight should have been holding a huge ray gun. Fun art fact, the pigment Egyptian brown was actually bone ash and asphaltum obtained by grinding up Egyptian mummies. The use was suddenly discontinued when its grisly composition became generally known to artists. Starship Trooper, in high school I read and love Starship Troopers, I even fantasized that about having my own armored suit and correcting the injustices of the world of tactical nuclear weapons. The more I thought about it, the more it became kind of comical, hence this painting. It was later bought right out of my portfolio by Jim Bain of Tor Books for the book, Earth Descended. Now it looks like someone from the 1600s in America. New America. Oh, that makes sense. Artists and art collectors can readily tell the difference between one artist and another. Beyond personal taste and style, there's a quality of paint application that's unique to individuals. In this painting, I experimented with a thicker, gooier form of paint. I like the approach and still use it in certain ways today. Guardsmen. It's a long-standing tradition that illustrators occasionally pose for their own covers. Norman Rockwell did it to distraction. I submit this minus the lion's head and fur and the mechanical hand as a humble example of that tradition, believe it or not. Mission to Universe. I just walked out of a store on Railroad Street in New Milford when I looked up at the sky and saw something I'd never seen up close in person before in inversion. A cold front came in on top of a warm front and all hell was about to break loose. As the clouds boiled, I stood in awe thinking I've got to do a painting of this. The right book finally came along and this is the result. Someday I'd like to do more of a version of a storm like this. Okay, so I'm guessing that's what happened. Well, think I've been told I'm especially good with color. It's just because I've taken a lot of chances with it. I almost always do uh, a quick, very rough, small color sketch to approximate how the finished piece will look. However, I can really make myself follow the sketch. As I paint, I keep thinking, hey, let's try this. Had by time, I would go back and rework the color in this painting. Jewels of the Dragon. If you ever seen a live news report from a war zone, you've probably seen the television's picture spin or move widely as bombs and guns go off around the camel man. That's what I wanted to portray here by slanting what would normally be seen for 
stupidity in giving it a low point of view. Marooned in real time. When I look at this painting, I remember being blinded by the cadmium red ground I used for this and Frederick E. Church. After I read the manuscript for the book, Church's painting of an erupting volcano called Cold Epoxy came immediately to mind. I didn't want to copy Cold Epoxy, so I didn't look at it until I finished my painting as a cover for Analog. This one in Analab Award. Faders from Earth. It can be frustrating when you are given a good book to do a cover for that has little visual material and see a weed said that he preferred to illustrate a scene implied rather than describe. And I did that here. The work of Chelsea Bonestar also influenced this picture. To the resurrection station, to create a unifying patina for this cover, I mixed burnt sienna into my medium. This is also a way to randomize or fairy color. Robots should be able to perform like humans, but not have a human anatomy, otherwise they will simply look like a human with a metal suit on. Oh. Eyes of Amber, with the exception of the lens on the probe in the creature's hand, I removed all the yellow as if with a filter from this painting. I wanted to have an other earthy feel to it. This painting reminds me of some old copies of the Saturday Evening Post I've seen, back when it was printed in only one or two primary colors in black. Death Room, back in my high school days, a friend of mine lent me some of his analogs to read to me. It was the Saturday Evening Post of Science Fiction. Years later, when I was assigned a cover to do for analog, I was surprised how little they paid compared to other markets. Nonetheless, I consider it an honor to do this first cover for them. Octagon, form follows function, is one of my rules for designing robots. If you study machines that don't hide their inner workings, there is a beauty to them, similar to that of the human body in motion. Fun art fact, the reason artists originally started painting on canvas was so that they could unmount their paintings and roll them up for transport. Next stop, the stars. There are four ways to make the main subject in a painting stand out well. You can make the foreground subject lighter than the background, as I did here, or you can do the reverse. Also, you can make the subject cooler or warmer than the background, as I also did here. Trojan Orbit. I did most of this painting in acrylics and finished it with oils. For some reason, my acrylic painting came out looking extra clean, smooth with little variation in color and tone. As I get older, I like to put more and more variation to have tone, texture, and color into my work. But there's something that appears to me in this too. This painting along with 12 others was stolen from a show at a university. Interesting. The Kindly Ones in Sirith is one of my illustrator heroes. By studying his work, I've learned a great deal about color, composition, and drama. He was also especially good with action scenes and time of day color elements of my study should be evident in this painting. A thing done right is done with the authority of knowledge in Sirith. Firewatch when you do a cover for a science fiction story, you wanted to have clear science fiction qualities. Unfortunately, not all stories have a visual element that fits the bill. It's best to find something that fits the book conceptually. Art is not a transport or copy. Art is the expression of those beauties and emotions that stir the human show. Howard Pyle. Ritling, our world because of the tendency of the atmosphere to diffuse the blue part of the visual spectrum is split into warms and cools. Ambient light is cool, blue is directly is warm, yellows and reds. When I compose a picture, I place my cools and warms accordingly. This painting is a clear example of what I mean. Imperator paint. When I was doing covers for poor books, sometimes a cover I did for one book would appear on another. I don't know why originally I painted this for Sleepwalker's World. It was printed for the above title instead, and the wolf was cropped out. Sadly, this painting was stolen. Dude, this guy and his paintings. You know, to steal an artist's paintings is just rude. Game of Empire. Rick Berry introduced me to using liquin as a medium. I first used it in that manner for this painting. The trick is to apply it directly to the surface and paint into it. Sadly, the soften in liquin gives me a sore throat when I complain about that. Some sarcastic artist always says, yeah, you're not supposed to drink it. It's silly to speak of modern art. There's no such thing. Art is good or bad. Time has nothing to do with it. James Montgomery flag. Wild blue in the grave every years ago, I came up with an idea to do an illustrated book. I'm happy to say I'm working on that now. It's called Nemo, and the main character in that book is an artist of the same name.
name prior to selling the idea for this book, I did a cover under the pseudonym, this was a cover. The fun part was that the book was reviewed and mention was made of the unknown cover artist named Nemo. Since then, I've done three or more covers under this name. It's pretty good, honestly. His art is actually pretty good. Pretty decent art. Looks like a mother and her children. Mighty good load. Beginning artists often make the mistake of giving the same level of contrast to differently lit areas. In a painting, you have to decide what the most important part of the picture is and mentally adjust your aperture to accommodate that as I did here. Griffin and Glory, not everything I do in a painting is completely conscious. Looking back at this cover, I can see that. I use what I call a sculptural composition. For the most part, sculptures are well balanced and the figures are well rooted to do. To some platform, this approach can give a painting a classic quality. Hand of Say, I've always liked the artwork of Ed Cartier. While I was still in high school, I remember finding old issues of Amazing and Unknown at the library and discovering his work. Before I started work on this cover, I was given a few old color Wolf's Cartier that, that weren't used for the final cover. I combined two ideas into one to produce this cover, a collaboration between me and Ed Cartier. Art should be realism of impression, the mood moment, yes, but not the realism of things Max Field perish. Lady, I wonder if that lady's gonna get shot by the axe, knight of dragons. How did dragons evolve? What other reptilian mammalian creature has six limbs? There are none that I know of. This dragon has two arms, two legs, and two wings. Although six limbs, it's entertaining for me to think about such things as I paint. No, I've actually never considered that. Freedom Beach. Two things that you cannot put on a book jacket or a naked person and something depressing. I did both here. The naked woman on the Sphinx has committed suicide. I was told to paint her as a she's just resting. Went primarily for mood for this cover of one of mystery. I didn't even notice the woman on there. She has committed suicide. Wonder how maybe ate something poisonous. That is sad and depressing. See what we got here. That wizard looks off compared to the griffin and the viking. The complete enchanter. There were so many fun elements in this story. I had a hard time deciding what to use. I just put as many as I could on the cover. I hope the readers of the book enjoyed the little elements from on the cover. Carved symbols are a mathematical formula to transport you to parallel worlds of myth and legend. The earth stone, what makes artists talented is that they have a greater visual ability and are keen observers of nature and people. More experienced artists gain ability as their clarity of vision increases with the amount of art they do. In my head, I have a file of visual experiences to draw on for each painting I do. They are based on things I've observed, such as the eerie mist in this picture. It looks like uh, there's also an apparition, possibly. I kind of magic. Why some things work with no approach and others don't is a little of a mystery, even why it occurs to me to try something it is. For example, I did the underpainting for this all as a negative of what the final color would be. Each layer of paint, no paint is fully opaque. I fixed the look of the next layer, the fire in the castle. It's going to be orange, but I mean, its complement was so neat looking, I left it as it was. Silver hair, the wanderer. I did this not long after. After we moved to Connecticut in it, I tried to capture my feelings during our first spring here. Fun fact, the color magenta is named after the site of a battle in Italy in 1859. Interesting. Probably because of blood. So I'm guessing blood is magenta. The flood tide for Tryon Park in Upper Manhattan, almost in the bombs, was the scene for any of my early paintings. I'm told the rock formations that were created by receding glaciers, my wife, and I spent some time climbing among those rocks. It was natural that I would use one on a cover when the opportunity arose. The creaking lands. I don't think I'll ever do another painting this wild with color. Sometimes you need to push something further than it seems. Reasonable to test the limitations. For an art fact, the painter Gerard Doe, 17th century, was so afraid of getting dust into his painting, he made a trapdoor to enter his studio and then sat for 15 minutes for dust to settle before working. Very patient. Looks like they have slain some kind of dinosaur. Ripped Bird. Santa Dog, a monster, a babe, and a tough guy with a gun. How do you combine the three and not have them add up to a cliche? I don't think it succeeded, but I put a lot of thought into it during the
this was a learning experience. Idiot Savant found an interesting title and do a painting before I started doing covers. This was a standard procedure for me. At the time I did this, I was renting a single room in Lechmont, New York, and going to Manhattan every day to show my portfolio. It was a nice trying, but eventually fruitful time for me. Secrets of the Sorceress. This was done as a portfolio piece. It's never been used as a cover in the US, but it was designed to have type placed in the fire pot. Fun fact, a pigment called Indian Yellow was made by heating the urine of cows fed on mango leaves. Riding the Torch, Spinrad's book was about an artist of the future. Here he is symbolically, as if he's before his easel, directing his art, the thought of a single person using a computer as his medium to create moving paintings appear to me greatly. The coming artist will make his reputation not by picture in still life, but by drawings that are animated. Winsor McKay. The Black Company. Mood is always important in the painting. Here I place the axe in the middle of a storm. To intensify the drama, part of the look of this painting is taken from real life late in the day while driving my car with the sun behind me. I notice a storm coming towards me. After it passed overhead, the tree and building in front of me were lit eerily in warm sunlight. Man, that guy is getting tied up and I think she has like a little tail, right? Is that a little tail? Mind bomb. I like to call this painting mind bondage. Even though I painted this with complete seriousness, there's something funny about these furry girls who are tempting the guy who's tied up knifing a giant. The white fire, the whitest block, this artist block. Sometimes I can't seem to come up with a good idea. One is just to draw the unimportant elements in a book and work with them until I include just the important ones. Another is to mindlessly scribble. It really works for me, but for this cover it did. Can be obey. On the CD's light can be refracted in ways that produce strange effects in this painting. I try to exaggerate this phenomenon to hint at the hidden magic in the story. Fun fact. Accidental ingestion of Naples yellow. A lead-based paint may have caused Van Gogh's peculiar vision by sweating his optic nerve. It may have also contributed to his insanity. First of all, illustrators cannot live by book covers alone. There are other areas of discovery that need to be explored. I did this painting for that reason. Sacrificing income from commission work wasn't easy for me. The thing that makes this painting differ from many of my book covers of the time is in the number of what I call levels. By levels, I mean distinct vertical planes that the subject exists in. Persephone has many levels and enables the viewer to easily walk into a painting. Crystal Clouds, the series required a huge amount of type on the canvas. In a case like this, I've learned to compose a painting as if it's somewhere on top, otherwise I would drive myself crazy trying to perfect a composition that can never work. Lady of the Snow Mists, deep in the depths of Fort Tryon Park, you will find the Lady of the Snow Mists. That's where I found her. I based the landscape on what I saw in the evening when I was walking through the park. The everyday world around us is a great source of ideas. Persephone's magic. When I began this painting, it had a stagnant quality to it. Unable to solve the problem, I began looking through all my art books in hopes of finding a solution in some past artist work. I found it in the art Nofu, paintings of Alphonse Mucha, his sense of design and movement or very helpful. The influence is hard to see because this painting has little art nor full quality. Lots of humans looking creatures. Interior life. If you have a pure beautiful young woman on the cover you have to have a foreboding forest of little demons. It's a matter of contrast. I used color to separate these elements as well. White light on the ground and a horse and cool colors on the creatures. I like how there's a sign that kind of resembles our street signs. Now turn on next exit even though they're horseback riding. Apocalypse. Here they come for the four horse woman of the apocalypse. Maybe too many of my covers can be summed up in a single sentence. Here you can see how I use Reddit to reflect the action taking place in the painting. That's an interesting feature. Tatra's Grimm's World. There's a lot of beauty to be experienced just before sunrise. The world is quiet, the air is cool, the sky on a clear day is deep blue. You can still see some distant planets looking like stars and there's always a chance of sighting a meteor, especially if it's a big one. It's that crisp clarity of this early morning that I try to capture here. Think in masses, define them in line, George B. Bridgman. Meanwhile, don't give me a city book if you don't want a city painting. This cover had so much type on it, I thought it might be 
nice to see a reproducer with everything visible. The original of this was stolen. Okay, Dr. Alb Battendier's method from an issue of Cosmos, 1882. He suggested that to clean paintings, the best substance is early morning urine, freshly produced. Okay, another orphan. Sometimes a painting is missing something, and for some reason, I can't figure out what it is. During those frustrating times, it's good to get a second opinion from another artist. In this case, I asked Paul Chadwick Creative Concrete for help. He just suggested adding the figure you see in the background painting to the real Moby Dick, if you hadn't guessed, to balance the composition and draw more attention to the dilemma. That's really cool. She started as a certain look to non-organic naturally occurring substances like water, rocks, and clouds. Mathematicians use fractal geometry to describe nature. When I painted the water for this picture, I tried to think about the rules for waves. They are basically irregular concavities on top of concavities on top of concavities that can shift with the wind. You might think that being concerned with such things would detract from the drama, but I think it adds to it. What is this guy talking? about. What is that? Fish conquers from the darkness. There's an artist friend of mine who says there are breakthrough paintings that take you to a higher plane of artistry. What he means is that you learn something important that's carried on in subsequent work. I think that's the case here. It's up to but I resolve something about paint application on this one. See what he resolved. Is it the shadows? Is it the lighting? Reindeer people? Early morning colors can be enchanting in the perfect setting for anything magical. Why I use Green for the sky is open to speculation, but I must have seen something like it before. The composition for this is a little unexpected and one I like. Iron Lord's rules of light and reflective colors. Color are meant to be broken, especially with sword and sorcery type fantasy. Actually, I think anything goes in any painting as long as it is internally consistent. In this painting, rather than go with natural outdoor light, I went with apoidic lighting. The central figure is lit as if by a spotlight, and the surrounding figures, the dead guys, are in shadows. The Barbarian. When I was a teenager, I loved to read the letter pages of comics. One day I thought they were right about me. The day came two months after this issue of Conan appeared. But let's put it this way. In the future, I hope to see many more covers by Thomas Kidd. And 125 had a good cover. Will we ever see this Thomas Kidd again? I was thrilled. I had great reviews. Too bad this was the only Conan I did. Orwan. He was known around the publisher's office as Oman the Moron. I was living in Washington Heights at the time. This was assigned in nearby Fort Tryon Park was a neat reconstruction of 12th century cloister and I used it as a backdrop. The same cloister was used in the painting secrets of the sources. Oh no, are they sparring? I don't know if they're just sparring because if you look at that shield, it looks like it has splintered from an attack. Shadows out of hell, I like to call this painting Island of Naked Woman. In this story, females are the sole residents of the island. The higher they work up this hierarchy, the less clothing they wear. The queen, for example, dons only her crown. Interesting. So I'm guessing this lady is up there because she doesn't have much on. I'm sure the other ladies are probably in the same position, if not higher. Stones of Namur. On a sunny day on earth, most of the skies some shade of blue. Under different conditions, the skies can be a number of colors, shades of black, green, yellow, orange, gray, white, red, and even pink. In areas on another planet with a different atmosphere, the sky could look quite different at varying times of day. It's a fun area to explore, as I did in this painting. I like how this is medieval times, and this guy seems to have an AK, Sword of the Spirits. This is the last painting I did for a trilogy. I did all three in two weeks, sometimes one Lay or another, such as an art director not approving sketches right away, can cause work to back up. In this case, things went surprisingly quickly. Prince in Waiting. This was the first in a series of three books because I knew the type would be boxed. I came up with some very different, for me, compositional solutions. Ultramarine compared its ingredients to Indian Yellow Sea Card 41. It's made from semi precious stone. Lapis Lasuri. The true version of this pigment is extremely expensive. Spell of Fate. A lack of description in a book can be tough for an illustrator, but what do you do when the characters aren't even described? In this case, I marked every little descriptive statement about all the main characters and put the pieces together to come up with what they look like. After all my hard work, the rough that was chosen did not incorporate most of them. Can't tell if that's a lady or a guy. Wizards retreat after many years of doing fantasy painting. This was my first wizard. Many more would come, but you also remember your first. I imagine this sorcerer is communicating 
communicating with someone from a distance through a magic sphere. Sable brushes are not made from the hair of sables, they're made from miso hair. Sable just sounds better. Success! When I get an assignment that has few parameters, it's both exciting and trying. That was the case with this painting, How Do I Paint the Ultimate Wizard? I drew up dozens of sketches and changed my full-size sketch many times. Recently, I even had a chance to work on it some more when I made changes to it for use on a collectible that looks like a telephone and a perf and his wife. A bad spell in York. I prefer to paint narrative pictures that is one that tells a story. When I first started doing covers, I was warned to keep things simple compositionally. You can do this by creating tonal masses. Conceptually, it can be done by giving prominence to one idea and subjugating others. Looks like a cat turtle, raccoon, and hair. Wired sisters, when I do a cover, I feel my primary goal is to reflect the main ideas of the book. If I were to simply illustrate the actions taking place on a page, it could be misleading. The mood in this case is a humorous one. The main action the which is bestowing magic on a baby similar to a christening like the book. I also have allusions to Shakespeare. Rat family, orangutan, wizard, lots of things going on. Sorcery. I've insisted writing in this collection that this was fun to paint because the reader would get sick of reading it. So goes this was a hell of a lot of fun to paint. So much so that after I got this painting back from the publisher I had to add more to it the mice on the beam. Equal rights. This is the first of several disc world covers I did for the science fiction book club. The books were filled with plays on words, bad puns, and a lot of silliness. It was easy to reflect those aspects on the cover. I especially enjoyed putting little secondary red jokes for the sharp eye this world plan to find. Don't see jokes. You can tell me those jokes though. Pegasus Dream. This was to be used as a greeting card, but the publishers thought it was too lasciferous. Andrew and now my wife posed for this. I guess she's just too darn sexy. I remember working on this as Salsa. Music shook the floor beneath me, drowning out my little radio. My dingy apartment was empty except for a mattress, some boxes, art books, a drawing table, and a chair. But I was nearly in love, and even though I didn't know it, the future would be rosy. Bowsinger, A.B. Frost, and Heinrich Clay were the masters of drawing and anthropomorphic animals. Normally, they did it without changing the animal's anatomy. They just placed them in human positions or sewed them were enclosed. I tried to emulate their approach in this painting. Thank you did quite a good job. Looks like a proposal. Elven court. Much like colors are contrasting, so is that subject matter in, in the painting. When you place an everyday person wearing casual everyday clothes, not next to someone wearing something more formal than from another period, each complements the other. Whenever I can, I can try to find elements like this in the story. Looks like trousers and night. Spell of intrigue. Here I've combined two cliches to have a double corny factor, the old baron scene, but this time there's a brawl with elves. A complicated composition like this is hard to work out well. You have to create group masses with simple shapes. At the same time, the action should be plausible. Pro. For some reason, I was in a painterly mood while working on this cover. I squished and moved the paint all around, enjoying its physical quality. I decided to use this approach in future paintings by resisting the urge to completely control the flow of paint. You can make nice little discoveries and in the process mimic the visual texture of nature. The Unschooled wizard outside with a blue sky overhead, the ambient color is bluish. Inside with walls around you, the direct light bounces off the walls and the ambient color is partly the color of walls and the light source inside a tent with translucent fabric is a special circumstance. In this painting, the ambient light is orange and the lighting from the open tent flap creates a cool wind lighting. That's scary. Weird tales, my sketchbooks are filled with ideas. I try to record them as soon as they occur to me. The old maxim about them being fleeting is true in my case. This idea occurred to me long before I got the assignment. I was told to paint what I wanted for this issue of Weird Tales. So I went through my idea fire and found this. Spatial delivery, man as bear. Bear as man was the theme of this cover and the book it was done for. The secondary inspiration for this cover was from personal experience one evening during my 
my brief college days, I was confronted by a buddy who threatened me. I stood my ground and he too, my bewilderment, backed down and walked away. I felt a fleeting moment of self-satisfaction, then I heard a deep voice behind me in one more second that I would have ripped that guy's ear off. It was my bear of a friend, Kevin, backing me up, unbeknownst to me. Petro Gypsies, as I did this painting, I imagined people saying, what the hell is that? So you know, the long snake-like thing trailing back to the farmhouse is a giant oil drilling oil. Later, when this painting was on display, at a convention, someone actually came up to me and said, what the hell is that? Time with the great freeze, I learned more about painting in oil by using acrylics. If too much of your painting takes place on a subconscious level, it's a handicap when you try to repeat an effect. When I worked with acrylics as I did with this cover, I had to think about every step later. When I went back to oils, I maintained that conscious analysis of each brushstroke. That doesn't mean that I don't ever use intuitive insight. Gonna Kate, the cover falls squarely into the category of tough guy with guns. I like to think of it as a pre-cyberpunk picture. Later, I was asked to make the guy a little more clean cut, but I prefer this version. During and after the golden age of illustration, it was common for illustrators like Flagg, Rockwell, Paris, Gibson, Christie to do product endorsement for things like cigarettes, coffee, liquors, pens, and watches more like athletes and actors do today. Planet of the Dam, what's that guy shooting at? I tried to design this wraparound so the casual book buyer would pick it up to see what was happening on the back. What is that guy shooting? Planet One, I'm obsessed with trying to find interesting solutions for a cover. I don't want to do something different even if the subject matter is not that different. Here I presented everything from a low point of view with underlighting to help emphasize the main character's tremendous size. I'm always trying something new. Widening the torch in paper. This is one of those paintings I'd love to redo with a lot more thought. A traveling city in space could make a unique painting. Originally it was used to be used as an end paper for the book of the same title. Later it was completed and used for Best SF number 7. Sure. Frank Vassetta has been known to take all the paintings he's done and rework them inspired by him. I did the same with this painting, originally done in 1978. This fairly loose painting was changed into a more detailed obsessed version in 1983. Gremlins go home. The challenge with this picture was to paint a juvenile book cover that didn't look like one. I was told not to have any children on the cover even though the main characters were kids. To solve the problem, I used a cat's point of view to focus in on Gremlins, Leprechauns, so that the children became legs and feet of an undetermined age. Good Housekeeping. This painting was originally done for the magazine Good Housekeeping. It was a mainstream illustration with no fantasy elements. One day, unable to help myself, I changed the guy in the business suit into a wizard and the dog into a dragon. I guess I'm just so in love with the genre that I feel inclined to turn all my paintings into fantasy. And that is it for the collection. Now I'm going to put them in my binder and see how that looks. Okay, so this is the binder. Here you go. One card at a time. Tell me which one's your favorite. Which one have you seen before or any of the books you've read? I've read none of them. Lots of very nice paintings. There you go. Some of these paintings have really hidden features. So you gotta pay attention to some of them. I really like how he's organized them so that 
the landscape cards are actually at the end are these sectioned off together. I hate that when they combine them. Tom Kit, that's the last one. Okay, thank you. Bye.